Uh, time to cut some more stock down. Uh, this is some uh, 0.065 wool DOM mild steel, uh, 1020, something like that. I'm cutting it down into the blanks, then I'll put them in the mill and do some mill turning with them, uh, looking to make the outer bearing adapters that uh, allow uh, a newer bearing to fit on the old kingpin spindles, uh, part of the brake kit, one of the brake kits I do. So let's crank a few of these out and then uh, we'll do the rest of the prep on the stock and then we'll start throwing it in the mill. Now we're getting up close. I got another piece or two here. Uh, I'm watching when it gets so short that it goes to the other side of this fulcrum point. That's when I gotta do something a little different. Part of the reason it's so loud and screaming is because uh, there's barely enough metal here for the teeth. The coarseness of this blade. Um, I forget you always want to have at least two or three teeth in so you don't strip teeth out. I'm right on that edge. Anyway, in order to uh, cut the piece any shorter because what you'll see is, as I do that and I go to clamp it, the, the clamp will have a tendency to do that, okay? Um, so, I just hang on to the last piece I cut when I get to that point, and that acts as my jack bolt. Uh, and keeps it parallel. And there's a lot more space here than on the little saw, so I'll chop the last piece on the little saw. And, and since we're dealing with this, an awesome modification to bandsaws, you can drill and tap a hole over here and put a bolt in. And then you have an adjustable uh, jack bolt, which is basically what it, you know, what it would be then. Uh, I just never got around to it. You just take the darn thing off, drill and tap a hole in there, put yourself a long bolt in there, and then you can dial it in to exactly the thickness you want. I'm just used to using another piece of whatever I'm cutting. And I was cutting these on this uh, saw earlier, so the stop's already set. Okay, now, I still have enough for another piece there, but obviously I can't grab it. Um, I've been cutting it on the lathe, but actually, now that I'm looking at it, uh,
if I can keep the back fairly even. Ah, stupid burr. Quite down quite a bit if I just lay a hand on it. Give it just a little bit of tension there. Now the, the nice thing with the other saw is uh, because of the coolant, they, they don't come off hot. Uh, which is quite nice. They come off a little hot on this one. Basically I'll just take them out of here, uh, sand the burrs off and that stuff, and then I'll throw them in here and I'll just have this sitting over here. Next up on the agenda is take each of these and run them through the mill and I end up with this. And one edge, uh, the downward side, no burrs, perfect to start with. I finally got the feed rates uh, and dimensioning and everything just exactly where I want it so hopefully it'll stay consistent uh, and I can just crank all these out. You can see by all of these that uh, it took me a while. Now some of these are duplicates, you know, the, there's machine ones in here, which is the other end to the, uh, the stubs, the, uh, the scrap, you know, like you can see, got quite a bit of, uh, chatter at a couple points there, so... Let's see here, roughly right around 30. Uh, <laughs> and I did get a, I did get a few usable ones out of that, but I did get quite a few. Oops. Um, went through a couple of uh, cutters, had the speed up too high, and that kind of thing to start with. So, okay. And I had a crash a little bit ago. I got a bad lip on here now. Uh, bent my boring bar, took a crescent wrench, and, uh, bent it back to where it should be. <laughs> so this is 8 thou per rev at 900 RPM, and that's just going to do the facing just to make sure it's uh, at the right length. And earlier, I wasn't getting that squeal. Uh, then I bent the boring bar, and I've been getting some squeal, so.
And this is straight off the the mill. On the right here is the burr. So that's the top side. This is the bottom. You know, it was in the middle like this. And that was 1500 to 3000 both uh, 3000 per rev, both inside and out. I will have to do a second op, more or less, to get rid of the burr here, but uh, it's taken me plenty long enough to get to this point. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to shorten that up a bit. 20000 too long, won't affect anything, but uh, I want to have them consistent, so we'll go in and change that. Oh, well, that's dead nuts. 0.842. Nice. And 0.789. Dead nuts. We're on the money. So the, the, act, the final uh, proof is how I like the fit on here. So I can, I can vary, you know, up a thou or so. Uh, once it starts getting too sloppy, I just pitch them, so. Okay, this is mock standard mill, uh, which it has a mill turn option, and it just makes it a little bit nicer to, uh, a little bit easier for me to, to do my uh, mill turning with. I haven't gotten to the point where I'm generating my mill turn tool pass with Fusion yet, so uh, I'm still doing this. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is what I'm using. So in order to go in and change that, I'm just going to go into edit here. And I've put in some percentage marks because then they're all uh, comments. Okay. Now, granted, you're not going to be able to see this if you're watching this video on your phone or whatever. But uh, uh, so that makes some comments. So then I put in my the name, and I don't have all my programs this organized. But uh, um, and I need to change this here. That's this is for the DOM that I used for the inner bearing adapters and I use that as a starting point. Um, I've since changed it so my roughing is actually uh, 08 and my finish is uh, 03 um, and let's put in uh, at 1500 um, I can go back and figure up what the 450 is. I don't know. Uh, inch per rev at 900. I think it was 900. Okay. Now my two different tools. One's a G56. Um, this was a note to me. Switch to negative numbers because the uh, wizards put it all out in positive numbers and if you if you notice when I did that one it uh, reverses direction that way I can use the boring bar for both the ID and the OD and not have to have a third tool up there or abuse the hell out of my Nicole micro cut um, so uh, G95 I think is the one that puts it into the inch per rev uh, I think I'm not I'm not positive I, I can go look it up but uh, anyway it works. Uh, there's the G56, tells it to use tool 1. This is just the facing the stock off. And it comes down, here's my OD turn. Um, and I could change this up and do the counterclockwise first and then switch it and it doesn't have to switch back. Ah, six one, I, well, actually, I do do it first, but uh, six and one half dozen of the other. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, feed rate of 08. Um, then you can see right here, then I, I change it to spindle speed of 1500 with a feed rate of 3. Depth of cut, um, they vary, you know, so like from here, 0.852 down to 0.842, that's 10 thou off the diameter. So it's only a 5 thou cut. Uh, but you'll see that some of them, uh, some of the chips in that stuff actually come out fairly thick. I do have, 
uh, some 10 thou depths of cut in here, at least I did. Uh, here's the ID bore. Um, do, 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 do. And there's my final feed rate, 1503. Oh, actually, and I will finish this real quick here. There's the cutoff tool. This stuff down here is stuff I had in for finish pass using the micro cut or the Nicole. Uh, yeah, Nicole micro cut, whatever. Um, the tip is so sharp on it that I had to go extremely slow, so it was just actually better to, once I figured out the 1500 and uh, 3000 per for the ID, I just changed things up and put that on the OD, and now I'm using the boring bar to cut the, uh, the finish pass. So I just I just cut and pasted it down here. I can I can get rid of this now because uh, it's after the M30. It's completely useless. Uh, I just stored it there in case I needed to put it back. Um, just like I don't need that M1 in there anymore. Um, bah, 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 bah. So anyway, let's go back up here. And here's the face the stock to length. And I'm 20 thou over. I'm not exactly sure... Why I know I I was coming up a little shy. Oh, I did have a crash. I didn't reset the Z's because they're close enough. So instead of putting this at. Uh, yeah, we can come up here and we can take uh, start a little sooner and take a little extra off. So, 0.892, The G1 command is going to be the the cut itself. Uh, then it goes into the X06. That's the uh, No, oh, yeah, so that's going up inside. Oh, no, 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 I take that back. This is coming from the outset. Um, minus 1, Y0. It's going to come from 0.9. Z of 0.95. This goes to 0.942. 892, Okay, so it's the G1X right here. So we can start by... Having that one start a little earlier. We'll take two thou off that one. Here's the 884. Um, let's take four off that one. Then it goes down to 76. We can make that uh, seven. It'll be a 10 thou depth of cut. Yeah, so 10, 10, 10, uh, 60. That's 62, so we can make that. Um, oh, duh. I don't want to do any of that shit. Okay. Close. Don't save, because I don't want to undo all that shit. If it's properly set up, so basically all I need to do is I don't have to come in here and change this. I need to come in and change... Um, so it, it's working like this. So any of those changes I pointed out down here, removing that, I, I really don't have to screw with that right now. What I can do is I can come into my work offset, and the cutoff is done in G57. Okay, I'm in G56 right now. I can go to G57. Uh, and it's a lot of times it's just easier. I'm going to move the mill over to X0, Y0. And then I could actually come down to uh, I'm gonna move it out of the completely out of the way there. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it down to on the with the MDI screen. I'm gonna bring it down to uh, uh, G zero Z zero, and I have the rapids turned down right now and stuff. So, so it comes down, and that should be. Right under the end jaw there.
Yeah, and there's more daylight in there than there was before, so... Who knows exactly what happened. I'm not going to uh, worry about, but what I am going to do... I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to drop it down another 20 thou. Basically, I'm going to say that it is a positive 20 thou Z right now. Okay, 0 0.020, enter it. Then I could come down here and I could do G0 again, and it'll drop the head that 20 thousandths. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty dang close right there. So, whatever moved it, I, I don't care at this point. That will get me my correct length within a thou or two. Um, so let's go back to G56. Let's go back to run. Let's uh, let's move the head back up. Um, I'm on G56, so I'm just gonna do the uh, MDI again to put it at uh, X0, Y0, which is typically roughly where I have it start each time. So, let's put a new piece in. 